So continuing where we left off, uh, we want to retrieve the vehicle from the vehicle console manager. It'll get sent to the hangar, and then we need to find the hangar elevator to go actually get in the vehicle. So let's do that next. So it's in hangar two. So let's go find the hangar elevator. And the sign says it's here to the right. Any of these will work. They all go to the same place. Um, again, that may be different in the future, but right now all of the elevators kind of can go to any hangar location. Again, holding F and then clicking on the button. All right, now you're in the hangar. You spawned your ship for the first time. Right now, death and destruction of your equipment doesn't really mean much, but in the future it should mean a little more. So this ship is the starter ship that I recommend. It's the Avenger Titan. It's nice because it's small. It has a decent armament, so you can take down some bounties that are honestly outperform and outclass this ship, but because of the way NPCs are, uh, it can kind of handle its own against slightly bigger ships. There I use the inner thoughts button to open this ramp, and we can see that this ship actually has a little bit of a cargo area in the back, as well as if we come over here to where the cockpit is, we can enter to the ship directly, open the canopy, and have the ladder drop down. So we can enter it two ways. I'll go through the cargo area to show you what's inside. So These doors are automatic, so when you come up to these doors, you don't have to do anything. They'll open on their own when you come close. And the nice thing about this ship is it does have a bed. Just like we saw when we started, uh, this is where you can go to log out. So you can log out or get up. That's a handy feature. It does introduce the chance for some bugs, so I don't recommend using it for now um, because you'll probably be dying a lot, but there's some ways to, to get around the issues that are caused by logging out in the bed. Okay, entering the pilot seat. Again, using the inner thoughts menu. And you're in the pilot seat for the first time. So it may look something like this if you're an Avenger Titan, but if you're in a different ship, say the Aurora or Mustang, the other starter ships, uh, the buttons are all the same, and I'll be showing you the default keyboard buttons. So to get the ship ready, you can push R for flight ready, or U to turn on all systems. Either one will work. I pushed R in this case, and what that does is it closed the canopy, it brought up the ladder, and it brought up that back ramp. So I'm flight ready right now. All right, we can see here on the right where I'm circling with the mouse, that's our fuel gauge. These are your countermeasures. This auto button here, that is what's telling you how your weapons are selected. As for the rest of this stuff, this is your standard velocity indicator, kind of like on a standard HUD, and this is your altimeter. Notice that it's a pressure altimeter, so it doesn't show uh, like a radar altitude. So it's saying 146, maybe meters, whatever units they're using in this game. Could be meters, but uh, but it's not going to show you absolute altitude. And that's important when you're coming into land, zero is not the ground. It's going to depend on what the relative altitude is in that area. Up on the top, we have a compass, and these are your emissions. So you have three types of emission in this game. There's infrared, cross-section, and electromagnetic, and that's what those three indicate, and they're gonna depend on the state of the equipment on your ship. And those signatures, they're used for missile tracking. So that's kind of the basic concept there. This is your current thrust output and the status of your kind of landing gear buttons. All right, so the first thing is push F11. That'll bring up your global chat. If you go to the friends button over here, you'll notice that you'll have this extra option Area 18 landing services, that's how you ask to come and go from the hangar. To close it, you can push F11 or F1, and that will open up the hangar for you. And a lot of the starter areas do not have a way to get out without asking to leave. So, okay, once the hangar is open, spacebar is how you'll ascend. So that's using your maneuvering thrusters to go vertically. And kind of like you would expect, WASD are your strafe. Strafe left, strafe right, strafe forward, and then strafe backwards. You'll notice that the left, right, and backwards do not strafe you quite as quickly as forward. And that's because the way they've implemented physics in this game, they're using a Newtonian model, and these maneuvering thrusters 
are implemented in such a way that they actually should respond relative to the size of the engine. So if you're trying to strafe left and right, you can see just those little guys are what's making you move. Um, but if you strafe forward, you've got the big engine in the back. So you can see that starts taking off and that's going to give you a lot more thrust more quickly. And they've tried to physicalize some of the engines in that way to make it a little more immersive. N is going to pull up your landing gear. And that's it. This little ship is all set up to fly. The mouse is how you control your pitch and yaw. If you have a joystick, I do recommend going through and binding all of your axis to the way you like it. Um, just as an example, I fly like I would fly a real airplane. So on the right hand, I bind. So I bind pitch and roll to the right stick. And I use a throttle with the left side. The throttle has throttle up and down. And then I have a little hat that does the strafe up on the, uh, on the throttle. What I would recommend the first time you take your ship out, don't worry about crashing. Don't sweat. You're not going to lose anything if you crash and blow up. Just get comfortable flying. Um, take off, fly around a little bit, do some slow turns, see how it feels in atmosphere. And then when you're comfortable flying around, you'll want to start exiting the atmosphere. So to do that, we'll pitch up and go fast. Now you may notice your speed is limited if we look on the left, there's this velocity indicator and there's this little box here that's moving around. What that is, is the speed limiter and that's going to limit your speed. So if I'm going faster than where the little red carrot is and I bring it below, it's going to reduce the thrust, even though I have the throttle maxed right now, down to the point where the speed matches where the speed limiter is and those will line up. Similarly, if I crank it back up, it'll accelerate at the capability that the that this ship has to reach reach what that is so you can't always reach your maximum speed in an atmosphere but you can in space we can see now that i'm already pretty high up and if we look outside the planet's way down there at this point we can see the spaceport and we're probably high enough that we can quantum travel and that's how you're going to get around in the universe so to quantum travel push the b key that will activate your quantum drive and you can see that it will have to spool once the quantum drive is spooled, you need to then align it to a location. So let's say you want to go to this point here, Crusader L4. And if you know a little about astronomy, L4 stands for the Lagrange point between the star Stanton and the Crusader planet. And if we look at the star map, we can see exactly where Crusader L4 is. So here's Crusader L4. Here's the planet Crusader and here's Stanton. And those are the Lagrange points four and five. One and two are closer to the planet. Here's one. Um, so it's not implemented there, but we can see our corp, they do have Lagrange one and Lagrange two. And there's five, four, and then three would be directly across. All right, so that's the star map. Now I started falling back to the planet because I was just floating here in space. Once you're calibrated, now you'll see it says spooling complete and ready. Just hold the B button while keeping your reticle on the target and you'll quantum travel. And with that, you are now equipped to make your way around the verse and start completing bounties. I All right, now let's say you want to go land at this station, a genie point. So just like before, we'll calibrate on it, hold B. Quantum travel. And we see that it dropped us out about 23 kilometers away from it. Most of the time when you quantum travel, you will be that distance. And I know from experience that the landing pads are kind of in this area. So. Do your first landing. So 
I went ahead and lined myself up on where the pads were because I knew from experience where the pads actually are on the station. And that's where I'm going to leave this one for now while we come into land. If you're interested in playing during the free fly, use my code like I mentioned in the previous video. It's in the description below. That'll get you some Alpha UEC. It's not much, but it's something. And then I'll get a referral point for it. And once you park inside of by Genie Point, you can store the ship by equipment gear that is inside. All of these rest areas have a medical center and you can tr transfer your clone to this location. So if you die, you will respawn here. With that said, leave it any comments down below and I will be doing a little more Star Citizen if you guys like this. See you in the next one.